Welcome back to the Football Terrace. Hit the like button. Make sure you are subscribing if you haven't done so already. And please click the bell notification button as well. Just follow those instructions in front of you. And the bell notification button is really, really important because the algorithm is not always our friend. I want to speak Saka today. I want to speak Carl Palmer as well. So strap yourselves in. If you're easily offended, leave. If you're a little fragile, leave. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Um, some of you are. Some of you really, really are. Um, but there we go. I saw a tweet today about Bakayo Saka, and it leads into Palmer being player of the year for England as well. So stay with me, because I think it's really interesting how the British media treats players, how fans and rivals treat players, depending on, depending on where they are in their footballing career. And there's some big accusations in some of these tweets I want to show you. I want to break them down. I want to talk about the players as well and the footballing element. So stay with us. But Carl Saka. Carl Saka. Who the hell is Carl Saka? <laughs> but guys, Saka. Let's take a little look at this here. So this says, I don't know if it's a temperament thing or if it's a personality thing. I think it's partly a racial bias thing too. But Bukayo Saka is continually underrated by the masses. He is polite. He's a good guy. He does a role that sacrifices flashy moments for the greater good of the team. To produce as reliably as he does, playing as many minutes as he does, often two versus one in the Premier League, puts him as one of the very best in world football. I don't like these fake debates pretending he's not, pretending he's not world class. I can't take an opinion that doesn't have him as world class seriously. Now, there's a lot to break down in that. So first of all, I'm going to start with the big part of that, that I absolutely agree that some people have an agenda against Bukayo Saka due to his race. Some people do. But I wouldn't label all the criticism of him for that reason. For instance, Don, big up Don on the football terrace. He criticizes Bukayo Saka. I don't believe that is because of race for obvious reasons. But I believe it plays a part. And I think we can ring fence those people out of this conversation because not, not Don, the, the bigots, because it, it, they're already so biased in, in why they think what they think. When you look at the rest of it, though, I, I disagree with the end that I, I, I don't think it's a fake debate if people want to say he's not world class. And the reason why I don't think it's a fake debate if you, if you don't want to say Bukayo Saka's world class, world class is a subjective perspective, point of view. So many people see it differently. I don't believe you can just say, well, your opinion's fake because you don't think Bukayo Saka is world class. I think, I think that is a step too far. When you look at the middle part of it, of course he produces very reliably on a regular basis. His availability is there, and we all say availability is the best ability. He's always doubled up upon, and he delivers. And I think he is amongst some of the best in the world. Now, before you call me a hypocrite, I think you can be part of the best in the world and not necessarily be world-class, depending upon your personal definition of world-class. So let's just leave that there, because it's not a world-class debate. I do think Bukayo Saka suffers with a huge amount of unnecessary criticism. All the goalposts are often moved. So he'll have a great game and you'll see people say, well, this person had a better game. Or, yeah, but he ain't world class though, is he? As often those conversations are irrelevant at that particular juncture, it's just another way of throwing him under the bus as an example. Arsenal are very lucky to have this young man. As an England fan, I feel privileged that he plays for my country. I'm privileged that we share the same country. I think he's excellent. I agree. He's not the flashiest player in the world. He isn't the most beautiful to watch on the eye, on, on the field of play. But I think he's very efficient. I think he's very consistent. And I think he is a top, 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 top player. And I still think there's another level for him to get to in terms of consistency of output. What he does in some of the biggest games for Arsenal, I, I still think those area of criticism exist. But that doesn't stop him from being a top, top player. The other comment that came through that says, isn't it crazy how fast Palmer has leapfrogged Bukayo Saka in the public eye? Irrespective of their actual quality comparison, I feel like Saka has to do more than a lot of players to be rated for some reason, even though he is phenomenal. And look, we're going to get to Carl Palmer in a minute because I've been really unhappy with the way people have treated him in the last few days. They're very different players. They don't play the same position. And when I say they're different players, Carl Palmer, in my opinion, is better on the eye. And I think for a lot of football fans, that matters more. For me, I just want them both to deliver. And right now, they are both delivering 
to very high levels. Carl Palmer's output is higher, but they are both delivering on such a consistent basis for their, their, their clubs and for their countries over the last few years. Again, I'm just happy with them. As an England fan, I am happy with the two of them. But the reason why you, an Arsenal fan may see it this way, it's different, is this. When Saka burst on the scene, the novelty was there. He was the new kid on the block. The hype was there. The media will follow that hype train always when it comes to who they praise and who they, they, they you know, the media will always try and build someone up and then knock them down. It's their model. It's literally what they do. We've seen them do it. Just follow the, the arc of David Beckham's life. Exactly this. Also, Bakayo Saka has hurt a lot of rivals. Over the past four or five years, he scored against loads of people, got winners, dunked on them, knocked them out of tournaments, hurt them. And the more a player hurts you, the less love you start to get. And you would say, well, why do the media follow suit? Well, because the media are smart and they understand what's going on. Saka has become disliked by lots of different fan bases because he is a threat to them. It's as simple as that. Now, Palmer has burst on the scene at Chelsea when they were doing nothing last year. And he dunked on a lot of teams and he's a new flavour of the month and everybody loves him. But it won't be long until he keeps scoring against... When he starts scoring more regularly against the Liverpools, the Arsenals, the Man Uniteds, the, the Aston Villas, and Chelsea start getting better and become more of a threat, he will get the same treatment. Now, of course, I'm ring-fencing, like I said at the beginning, the bigots and the scumbags. Um, that happens... That, 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 that's a separate conversation for another day. We're talking purely when people look at it from a footballing perspective. Cole Palmer will get this treatment as well. There'll be a new player that comes through where the hype's on him, and the media will turn. It will happen. And in fact, when it comes to Carl Palmer, we're already seeing it. I saw this post. They said, Carl Palmer has been named England's Player of the Year. A reminder that he only played 145 minutes and didn't start a single game in England's seven matches at the Euros, but did come off the bench and Scott got an assist and, of course, a goal in the final. Now, I feel like the second part is a little bit of a backhanded compliment, almost saying he played 145 minutes and he was England's Player of the Year. How is that possible? Personally, I don't really care who wins it. I care about how good the player is for my country. And I love the fact that Carl Palmer is an Englishman. I love the fact that he's playing for my nation. But I've already started to see the daggers and the knives come out for him. He shouldn't have got it. He should have gone to this guy, that guy, the other. Listen, if you think about our Euros, Mark Gahey played well in defence. Who else had an outstanding tournament? Genuinely for England. I think you're hard pushed to find another player who had an outstanding tournament. Jude Bellingham, very good in the first game. Saka had a good game here and there. Like, there was good performances. Palmer didn't play that regularly, but when he came on, he was fantastic. And I think this is a fan vote, right? Fans remember those moments at major tournaments. For the months and months and months leading up to the Euros, we were awful as well, by the way. So I'm not surprised Cole Palmer's won it. I'm not surprised even though he didn't play that many minutes. But you can see the knives starting to come out. And what the media will do is they'll follow suit. And unlike, I think, most YouTubers, most content creators, of course, we follow the trending topics. We talk about things that are popular. You know, when Man United get beat, nobody goes live talking about a transfer that Tottenham might do in six months' time. If you're going to go live, you're talking about Man United's defeat because you're talking about the trending topic that the viewers care about. Why would you not? That's different to what the media do. The media will look at it and go, oh, people have turned on Cole Palmer. Yeah, but we like him here. Well, he's a good guy. Yeah. But let's stick it to him the way these people are saying online. Or let's stick it to him like this, like this tweet says. Or let's say, let's run with what a certain pundit has said and we'll create the narrative out of it. Look what's happening to Arsenal right now with the dark arts. For the first time in my life, dark arts are being spoken about as a negative for football as opposed to a positive. And that will happen to Cole Palmer next. And this is one of the reasons why whether people like it or not, I, I honestly don't care. I try my best to, even if it's a rival, even if I'm not meant to traditionally in football, I try and stick up for a footballer, stick up for a club, stick up for a situation where I can. Because I know it's part of the media's game. Cole Palmer is likely to go through what Bukayo Saka is suffering with now, where nothing seems to be good enough, where they're looking for a reason to hate on him. And even when he does well, they move the goalposts and try and change things. That will happen to Palmer also. And I've, I've hated seeing the way people have attacked him for being player of the year. I think it's a disgrace. I think it's an abomination. He's a young man. He's had a very good season. He's got an award, so what? Let him have it. 
is not completely undeserving by any stretch of the imagination. But the way I see both these two young men treated, um, I, I, I find it to be strange indeed. But I'd love to get your views. I'd love to get your opinions on that in our comments section below. Um, as I always ask for people, make sure that you have um, subscribed to The Terrace. It's really, really important that you get that done. Hit the like button before you leave. And of course, the bell notification button as well. Get that clicked so that you don't miss any of our content. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. We'll see you on the top six show. Peace.